Hello and welcome to You Are Human, a show attempting to decode human potential and possibilities by bringing you real stories, real heroes. Whenever we read about or study about the lives of successful entrepreneurs, there's one quality that we find similar in all. That is, they're all visionaries. My today's guest gives me a sense of that. He is a board member on multiple organizations. He has brought an international franchise to Oman, which is fitness related, and he's also getting into the travel sector. Please welcome Amar Baboud. Hello, Amar. Hi, Jagruti. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here, and hopefully I can share some useful information and ideas for everyone who listens to this show. Yes, of course. You're here for that only, because today I'm going to take everything possible out of you. You know, it's like being a sponge, how yes. a sponge is. It takes everything. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do, because reading about you, whatever I've known of you, I feel there's so much that a lot of us can learn, because at such a young age, you are heading so many companies. You are trying to change the industry of events and exhibitions in Oman. You have brought F45. I think it's a franchise that I personally love. You brought it to Oman. So there's so much at this young age that you are achieving. So I feel, yes, you better share a lot of your insightful tips with all of us. <laughs> sure. Um, I'm very excited to, to share this information. Um, of course, uh, I think uh, I've been lucky in the sense that I've had many people who I've learned from and experiences mm -hmm. that I've learned from as well. And what I've come to know is that um, learning small things here and there, whether it's from a talk show, whether it's from the radio, it can help you when you least expect it. So Absolutely. I think all information is useful information. Right, yes. right, right. So you were living in the UK and it's just been a couple of years that you have come back to Oman yes. and mashallah you have done so much in your such a short span of time later on that I want to know that um, how has life been you know from UK to here because you didn't grow up here that's right H how has it been have you been you know are you, are you adjusted here <laughs> do you miss UK so yeah it was it was a very big shift and uh of course, growing up, uh, I've, I've lived in the UK all my life. Mm. Um, and I think moving back, uh, of course, it was a very big change. I used to come here on holidays, maybe mm -hmm. for two to three weeks a year for summer holidays. And right. enjoy my time with, you know, my, my cousins and, you know, my extended family. So, of course, I did have that link with Oman always. Right. And entertain them when they come to the UK too. <laughs> but coming here and living here is a very different uh, mm. um different thing and I think that that uh, applies to many other countries as yeah. well so of course I missed my friends and I missed my lifestyle and you know what I was used to over there and but at the same time I was excited I was excited to understand what can I achieve here it's mm. it's it's a new place Oman is uh, has so much potential it's a very right. young country yes so um, I think in the sense that coming to a country which is still quite young developing uh, lots of youth here uh, in terms of the population as well uh, I was really excited to kind of see uh, what can be done. And so that helped me get through kind of some of the cultural shock, uh, mm. uh, if, if I can put it that way. Uh, and also meeting so many great people here because it's um, a small it's country. A small, yeah, it's a small yeah, country. And yeah. You get to know yeah. many, many people. And yeah. I think um, having that community here compared to a big city like London, uh, it's, it's very different. So, um, yeah, that's what I'd say about Do you feel country. more at peace over here? Oh, yes, yes, for sure. Uh, and All the chaos is gone. Yeah? Yes, all the chaos is gone. <laughs> but I, I never re when I came here, I realized that I was living in chaos. At the oh. time, I didn't see it because mm. that was normal to me. Yes. Um, you know, I'd moved from a town called Cambridge, mm -hmm. uh, which is a university yes. town, a smaller town, to, to the kind of capital London, which was a big bustling city. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I got used to the big city life and, and all of that. And coming to Muscat, which is the capital of Oman, but a relatively small place, uh, I, for sure, I have much more of a work-life balance here. And you feel happier and more secure yes. uh, in, in, in Oman, yeah. for sure. So uh, in our previous conversation, you were telling me that 
you came back to Oman because you have a family business and you wanted to see how you can take that forward. And as I said in my introduction, that you've got F45, you yes. know, the franchise over here, that is great. And with comics, you yes. know, congratulations Thank for <laughs> doing an event in a pandemic yes. and that's a virtual event. Yes. I mean, that's something that people haven't experimented yet yes. and you've gone ahead and taken that risk and mashallah it is it is going so well so congratulations you know for taking that big step now when you decided that you want to come back to oman i'm sure you must have had some sort of the visionary that you are the vision that you had and you said okay i'm going to go do one two three four have things shaped according to your plan okay has, has it progressed <laughs> in the right yes. direction so i think the direction always is continually It's continuously shifting, isn't it? And yes. I think plans plan. because of the pandemic, it's even more. Yes. Yeah, like, even more because of yeah. the pandemic. And you know what I had planned for back then is not what I'm planning for right now. Yes. Uh, so uh, it's 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 hard it's hard to to answer that that question in a direct way. I think, uh, uh, like you said, I I did have many ideas, and it wasn't just for Oman because Oman is part of the GCC, the larger region, and I always saw kind of. Being able to tap into into that region hmm. um, uh, as well, but that's of course been delayed as a uh, um, as a result of what's happened. Uh, I think uh, in terms of these um, ideas that I had coming to Oman, I wanted to uh, set up new businesses. I wanted to grow. I wanted to uh, move into new industries to um, uh, grow the capabilities of our team, uh, employ more people, hmm. add more jobs to the economy. So. Um, These were all the kind of um, ideas that I had at the time. Mm. Uh, of course, some of them have worked, some of them have been achieved, and, course, and some yeah. of them have have not. I think uh, since the pandemic, uh, I, up until the pandemic, things were going very well. Mm. I think my uh, my colleague Joe had mentioned this to you earlier. Things were going very very well, and we'd even opened up two branches of F45, for example, and uh, the brand was growing. Yes. Uh, it's been tough since then, of course, in terms of the financial situation with the uh, closing of activities. We weren't mm. able to function. We moved online. You know, we tried to we tried to adapt, and that also applies to the exhibition industry as well. Yes. So, exhibitions and gyms were uh, some of the most hardest hit uh, in uh, in in these times. But uh, I think for us, survival was was the main goal. And I think we've almost got there. I hope we've almost got there. Uh, and then we'll relook at what our aims are going forward. But I think uh, having that kind of soft power, people trusting you, uh, and, and being able to kind of work with them during tough situations is what can hopefully uh, achieve more success in the future. How do you make terms with expectations and reality? <laughs> okay. Because of what you said, so I'm just yes. like. I Wondering. think I think you have to be very flexible. I think at the same time also you shouldn't take yourself or life too seriously. I think people and things come and go. Hmm. Uh, businesses fail, businesses succeed. Um, it's very hard to have a sustainable business, like a long-term business. Is very that's one of the greatest successes. I mean, uh, for me, I think having a business which lasts is is uh is kind of something which i would love love to lo love to achieve expectations of course you can always have expectations um but i think you have to kind of keep your feet on the ground and uh, have kind of long-term expectations and short-term expectations as well mm. so um achieve what you can when you can uh but don't be let down when you don't achieve what you set yeah. out to uh yeah. in the beginning yeah? Mm. yeah what stays then because you said that <laughs> this doesn't stay, you know, nothing lasts. So what stays according to you? I think the you? memories and the skills as well, because you have to go through so much uh, in, in business. Uh, when I first started out, I kind of uh, thought it was, you know, I had like a rosy picture that, you know, I'll have a company and, you know, I'll make lots of money and <laughs> I can go and retire. Everyone's early. dream. <laughs> Everyone's dream. Everyone's dream. And uh, it's, it's not the case. And I think a lot of people assume that. I yeah. think a lot of people assume that when they see someone who has, for example, multiple businesses, that's the case. But it's um, you have to make so many sacrifices. Um, and when you first set up a business, you have to lose money before you can start to yes. to to make to yeah. make anything. And it's the skills of being able to adapt uh, to uh, knowing how to trust people, knowing how to inspire people as well. I think be, uh, that's something I've learned: being able to inspire people to achieve um, uh, what 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 they're set out to to achieve, and being able to lead as well. I think um, uh, I used to think it was all about technical and hard skills, but I think the soft skills are 
so much more important. They're more long lasting, don't you think? They're more impactful. They're more impactful. They're more. They're more long lasting. Even simple things that you wouldn't have thought would be so important, like being able to prioritize. Mm. You know, if you can prioritize things in your personal life and if you're able to do that in business as well that's a mm. skill which i have found very very important mm. because you can't achieve everything yes. you have to prioritize what you're trying to uh, what you're trying to achieve and soft skills like um being able to um you know celebrate success one day mm. and then accept failure the next day mm. Mm. Uh, even from sports right <clears throat> for example you know i was playing football back <clears throat> uh, back in the uk and uh, I think sports is a, a great example of, of, um, of it, it's, it can set you up for how you can uh, act and achieve in business. All these soft skills are so, so important. Yes. What other skills, according to you, are important to be a successful entrepreneur? Mm. And not just successful, but even, you know, take the failures. Because mm. sometimes when you are successful, successful, that's okay. But when a failure hits, you don't know how to deal with it. So yes. what kind of skill sets are important for any entrepreneur? All skill sets. Yeah. All, <laughs> All of skill them. sets. Okay. I think, uh, <laughs> so there's um, no shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> there's no shortcut. I used to think that life was very simple and business was very simple. And I think the more <laughs> skills you have, even knowledge, which you might not think is important, like turn the radio and listen to what people are discussing. Hmm. Um, go on YouTube, listen to talk shows like this, you know, podcasts like this, where all this information is so, so important. And you, you, you'd, you'd be surprised. Like when I was younger and people were telling me oh you should read more and it really is true read more listen more mm -hmm. um and i think um success is uh what you make it to be i mean success is what you feel it's not what other think yes. about you like i might think i am successful but others might not so it is what you want to achieve uh is it the fame is it the money is it the personal relationships is it adding back to the community um and these continue Con continuously shift I yes. think um, yes. um, so <laughs> no I absolutely loved it you know because what you said that the definition of success varies from person to person yes. and also before that what you talked about listening because I feel in today's mm. times we all want to be heard mm. we all want to speak put yes. our voice out yes. but how many of us are ready to listen so I think that's a very important point that you have brought out so thank you so much you know for saying it because there are so many times when I, you know, have want to have a conversation with someone, yeah. but I'm constantly thinking about, oh, what do I want to say? Yes. <laughs> Rather than paying attention to listening, yes. because listening is one of the most important skills as a human being, right? It's one of the most important <laughs> skills, listening. And I think uh, what relates to listening is patience. Right. Um, sometimes when, okay, I think this is a decision I'm going to make, uh, but then uh, one of my friends or colleagues mentioned something else. I, uh, I don't act on it Im impulsively. I sometimes spend at least a day to think over it mm. and something might happen even on that day or even the next day that really shifts right. um, your initial idea. Mm. And I think it's being able to continuously process ideas and information in your head and share it and, and, and listen, just listen to everything, like all the people around you, people have different, um, um, different impressions, different ideas. And I think, uh, listen to yourself as well, I think, because sometimes you're kind of, there's a lot of noise going on and sometimes yes. you kind of miss out listening Absolutely. to yourself. So it's a balance. Yeah. And they say, you know, listening is an art. Yes. And not everybody's mastered it. Yes. You know, and again, very, very rightly put that there are so many times when we are so confused and so lost in the chaos that yes. we don't even listen to ourselves. Yes. So that's why I personally do meditation in the morning. Yes. Like I spend at least like my morning is two hours to myself. Yes. I'll do my workout, I'll read, I'll sit in silence to just, you know, gather myself, to pick up myself from yes. where I left myself yesterday. Because I believe each day is a work in progress. We're all yes. work in progress yes. and each day is a learning. So in the night when I go to bed, I, you know, pray yes. and then I surrender my day yes. and my doings to God. And I say, yes. I hope tomorrow is a better day. Yes. And in the morning I wake up and I do my affirmations, you know, yes. I write in the books. This is something I've started, you know, it's been a couple of months That's now. Great. I write and I think that I do not know whether it's translating in my life, but mm. it just gives me a very strong sense of yeah. being you know just writing things down like what i yes. want to be 
it's like reiterating and running those thoughts in your head. And I just feel like more confident and yes. more myself. You I know? think it's very underestimated thing. And the power of thing. writing in the morning yes, or the, just no, affirmations? I, I think generally what you said, I think the power of writing in the morning is just one uh, example. Right. Uh, I think, and I think by doing these things, by, you know, getting that like one hour of fresh air and walking out it, um, you don't realize it, but subconsciously that allows you to think uh, much more clearer, yeah. uh, much more clearer. And I think uh, to be able to be much more focused yes. as well. So this is something that I've recently started practicing. So around 8, 8.30, we pray as a family together. So yeah. latest by 8.39, I put my phone on flight mode. If I don't have something important to, you know, communicate to somebody or if I have a conversation going on, yeah. if nothing, so even at 7 o'clock, you know, I'll just put my phone on flight mode and I'll leave it in my living room and I won't take it to my bedroom. And yes. I've got a small alarm clock going back to the olden days and I got that, you know, and usually I wake up naturally, like my yes. body wakes me up, but just to see the time because normally we are so you know, depending on our phones to yes. see what time it is. So I got this clock and in the yeah. morning after I wake up, after I've done my, you know, uh, rituals, whatever I have to practice, I put my phone on if I'm going down for a run. Yeah. And believe me, you, it's helped me so much like to declutter because previously what would happen, I would wake up in my bed, you know, with one eye saying, what's the time? And then look at Instagram, look at this. <laughs> and it's, of course, you know, Everybody does it. Yes. Believe me, you, it's been like two weeks ago. I spoke to all my colleagues and I said, guys, what do you do the first thing when you wake up? I check my phone. I answer emails. I say Instagram. Yeah. And I was like, hmm, you know, because now I can see the difference, how it is impacting me, how it is benefiting me, yeah. not looking at the phone, yeah. focusing on myself. It's just given me so much more control over my thinking ability. Yes. Like I'm not just saying anything in a meeting. I'm more calmer. Again, I'm listening more. So I think these small changes, they have such a big impact, which we don't realize. You, you, know? you don't. And I think, um, so I was just smiling so much because when you were mentioning the phone, and uh, for me, the phone is my worst enemy. Like it can, uh, it makes me think I'm working sometimes when I'm not. Like yeah. uh, it's it's the messages, it's the constant messages, replying to messages, yeah. um, which kind of, um, and, and uh, more recently when I've just left, when I go, if I go to the office or wherever I'm working, I just put my phone to one side and silent and ignore it. Hmm. I, I can get so much more done. Right. To be yeah. so much more productive. Active, yes, isn't it? yes. And, yeah. uh, th th these are the things that you don't learn in, you know, in, in education or, or training, but these small skills for me have, have really helped me to yeah. kind of um, progress and grow. Yeah. yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. One another thing that you talked to me about in our previous conversation was about unfair advantages. I personally loved that term. And when you explained it to me, yes. I was blown away by that concept. And I was like, wow, you know, I never looked at it this way yeah. so if if you don't mind could you just elaborate on that sure. concept a little more for the audiences and for me also to hear it again sure. about unfair uh, advantages and secondly how can we recognize those unfair advantages in our lives and how can we use it for our advantage because recognizing is one thing and then utilizing it to you know achieve the right kind of benefit from it is a second thing yes so I think I think the unfair advantage, um, which by the way is a book written by a friend of mine <laughs> called uh, Hassan Kuba. <laughs> um, he, he's, he's a friend from university, uh -huh. and um, he was actually over here uh, once. We invited him over for our event, Comex, to mm -hmm. to, um, to to speak to the youth and, and kind of uh, educate them um, about his ideas. And at first, it didn't. Um, make much sense to me mm. uh, but then after he left Oman and I started to think about it more uh, it, it does make a lot of sense and it it, it explains um, a lot about how how we can um, wh what we can achieve and how we can achieve it mm. in in the sense that everyone whether we like it or not it, that's why he calls it the unfair advantage it's, it's not fair but we all have some advantages over other people mm. um, and some which we realize and some which we don't. So we should realize uh, because the quicker you realize, the more you're able to use that advantage to your benefit or to help you to achieve your, your target. And some of these advantages, most people, um, again, assume that the biggest advantage or the only advantage to success is wealth. Hmm. And that if you have wealth, you can generate more wealth because hmm. business is expensive and you have to have a lot of money and uh uh, but it, that's 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 not the case. And uh, what what uh, what the idea of un unfair advantage is that 
even things like uh, your network, mm. your friends, uh, who do you hang out with, you know? Uh, could someone from there um, help you achieve what, what, what you want to achieve? Um, uh, so like it's, it's network, it's location, w where are you based? You know, that could have a really big effect on, on, on your future in terms mm. of uh, not just what country you're in, but what location in the city are you, are, are you in? Um, so um, education is, is another advantage. Like for me, I was lucky that my family focused a lot on education and for mm. my dad, everything was education, you know, but he also allowed me to kind of uh, enjoy everything else in life as long as I did well in education. So that kind of having that education is, is a big advantage. So you, you don't have to have the money. You don't even have to have the education, but if you, um, the thing where I mentioned about network and knowing how to, um, I think a really important skill is being able to um, see a win-win situation mm. in everyone. Uh, and by network, I'm not saying use people. I'm saying see how you can work with 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 others. How can you collaborate? Can you collaborate? Into, yes. Collaboration is so yes. so important. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Collaboration is so important, and um, I think uh, when it comes to to business, uh, people tend to think that okay, I have an idea, and and that's it. It's not the idea; it's actually executing that idea, and you have to collaborate mm. on a daily basis, and ne ne never see things in black and white. Like a client is not just a client. A supplier is not just a supplier. A competitor is not just a competitor. At one point, everything can shift and, you know, the tables could turn and it could be the other side. So always, always have an open mind, um, uh, I think. And your question about how do you... Um, recognize uh, it. How, how do you recognize it? I think everyone's a genius. I think, um, <laughs> which is true. Yeah, which is true, yeah. I think everyone yeah. is a genius, like no, no matter what, what, but maybe they're just... Uh, doing the wrong thing, they're maybe not in the right position. Uh, maybe they haven't realized what their true passion is. But everyone really is is a genius, and uh, Albert Einstein said that, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Um, so recognizing is very important because ha have you ever had that where you are just kind of minding your own business, doing your own thing, and someone comes up to you is like Jagrati, I never knew you were you're you're so good at um, uh, calming people down, you know, and like you maybe you don't realize that. But mm. that that effect that you can have on people, as small as it might seem, could could mean that you're able to run multiple businesses and keep everyone calm when everything when the market's gone, you know, it's been destroyed. But you can calm people down, focus. So I think sometimes others around you mm. are, are better at rec at recognizing your skills than you are. Yes. So again, it's about listening. It's about being aware. Mm. Um, but also just being focused and like you said take time and think hmm. who are you hmm. you know uh and i think passion i think uh, understanding your passion doing what you really would love to do like for me i never knew that technology uh would be something i was interested in i always loved gadgets but i never thought that technology is something i would want to be involved in yes. but now it's kind of by luck this event which was owned by a family business which i now run and technology is there i'm loving it you know mm. and I'm, it, it gives you that energy as well so uh, it's many different things you can't really put it down to one thing right. but i think just try to be aware and listen yes yeah. and i really like what you said that you know you need to know who you are yes. because a lot of us are still so lost yes you know finding our own identity yes. we are probably trying to imitate somebody yes. you know so and again in the times we live in with social media with so much being out there yes. we do not know where we belong you know who we yes. actually are and knowing who we are is such an incredible power i feel no that's true i mean then the world is your limit the sky is your limit because once you know who you are that's it that's the biggest discovery I think, and there's no uh, stopping. Once, once you know when you are, I think things just seem to seem to work. Yes. Like I don't know what it is. There's some energy that around you which things just seem to fall into place. Uh, so because I, then you're not lost. You're not trying to yes. pretend to be someone. Then you know, okay, this is who I am. I think because that's the biggest confusion in in life, right? Yes, it's the biggest confusion. And and I think also uh, one thing I didn't mention was um, don't be afraid to promote yourself. Hmm. Like uh, I think um, uh, like. Promote just like I, I I didn't used to used to do that like you know only recently on social media I understood okay maybe I'm quite good at this you know mm. maybe I should be talking about this mm. because you you might be doing something really great but who but who knows about it so right. promote yourself and you'd be surprised how supportive people, people are people are yes, yes absolutely yes. no I mean because 
something like this podcast that I started last year. And you wouldn't believe the amount of, of course, even you have supported. I told you, you know, let's do a podcast. And yes. you were so supportive and you yes. said, let's do it. So I just feel that there's so much more energy for collaboration, yes. for support, for growing together out there today, yes. you know, which probably previously this wasn't the case. Previously, it was just like, I have to succeed. I don't have to look at what others are doing. Right. But today it's like, if the other person succeeds, I will succeed yes, as well. Exactly. So it's more like growing together rather than eating the pie alone. Always you know? grow together. Always grow together. grow together. That's something which 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 I learned quite quite quickly. And I think sharing ideas. Never be afraid to share an idea. Yes. Like uh, I mean, even uh, for me on a day to day basis, I think that the people I speak. Uh, speak most to are probably my barber or the barista mm -hmm. in the coffee shop who you'd be surprised are very knowledgeable and yeah. can actually give you so much guidance and Absolutely. I think listen to all advice that you can get ask questions listen share right be open yes yeah. yes yes you know when it comes to success it is said that there is enough room for everyone to succeed Yes. You know, yes. so we don't have to get insecure if somebody else is succeeding because there is so much space we all can grow. Yes. Universe is infinite, so you know, <laughs> that's true, that's true. Yeah. And, um, I think, uh, the, the universe uh, is, is infinite, like, like, like you mentioned. And I also think that other people's success, uh, can indirectly inspire lead, lead, or ins motivate us, inspire, yes. motivate, but also lead you to success if someone else does very well. Mm -hmm. uh, sets up a, a great initiative project or business. That's great because they're going to employ people yeah. and the industry is going to grow. So you mm -hmm. also have more chance to be part of that. So mm -hmm. I think uh, always celebrate other people's success uh, always be open, always be honest, uh, be friendly and kind. I think that kind of small things which can get you a long way. And I think yeah. these are basic, simple things. Very you basic, know? simple things. <laughs> That's what we need in life. That's what we don't we need. need anything else. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I want to ask you something related to technology because right now, again, I would like to congratulate you for comics. Yes. And the focus this time was AI, artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence is something that is existing, but I feel technology has gone it, it's progressing at a very rapid rapid mm -hmm. pace i want to know are we as human beings prepared to face this because ai is like creating something smarter intelligent yes. than us yes. so are we human beings okay to create <laughs> something that is smarter than us yes. i mean i'm just thinking out loud and i'm wondering that is it something right now we're okay with but the way it's going to develop itself the way we are going to develop AI. Yes. And again, about the pace, you know, never in the history we have seen technology growing at this rapid pace, yes. the way it is growing today. Yeah. Are we going too fast too soon? I think this is one of the biggest questions out there right now. And I think it's one of the most exciting questions because artificial intelligence <laughs> is really taking over the whole world and mm. we don't even know yet like mm. simple things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis we don't realize that is artificial intelligence mm. like on spotify it, it recommends songs to me which i love you know mm. um uh, these kind of small things artificial intelligence is already there um and there's many books stories and movies about artificial intelligence and there's always been fears of artificial intelligence even before it theoretically existed mm. So now it exists. Mm. And actually, um, the main idea of, of Comex is discussing how can we use artificial intelligence to benefit society? Because it could be, some people say there's a, it's a two-edged sword, right? Because it's smarter, faster, stronger than us. Uh, but also, um, and what the message of Comex so far from the experts who are involved in the field is that like any technology, mm. uh, if we can provide the right guidelines, it can be controlled and it can it can help humans in so many ways. And the really exciting thing is the symbiosis between humans and artificial intelligence, humans and machines, mm. because yep. humans are better at certain things and machines are better at certain things. Machines are more precise than us. Um, they're faster than us. And they don't have the biological needs that humans do. They don't need to eat. They don't need to sleep. Mm. They can work while we sleep. Mm. So they can help us to have better quality of life because the kind of churn of the work can be created by machines. Right. But if we can design them uh, in, in the correct way, uh, they can really benefit humanity. But humans 
we are more creative. For now, <laughs> we're more creative, but soon uh, machines will be able to, they've already written books, by the way, uh, not advanced books, like maybe you would think like, you know, um, a, a child had written it, but machines are getting there and machines can beat humans at games now. Of so, course. So, yeah. You can't yeah. play chess with a machine. You, you can't play chess with a <laughs> machine, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's amazing what artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence can, can achieve. Um, I think we should be moving fast, but mm. we should be moving carefully. Mm. And uh, in the future, I can see um, uh, humans having like a team of machines behind them to uh, improve healthcare, mm. to improve education, to um, fix many of the wrongs that are in the world. So for me, I see artificial intelligence as a, a great, great thing. Wow. wow. <laughs> because artificial intelligence is something that freaks me out as well you know the more i read about it the more yes. i get into the and now that you're saying that they've written books they you know they, they, they have written <laughs> machines books. are writing books now and of course you know i've been reading about how they're beating the best players sports people yes. you know uh, machines are beating them so and we all know right that if i'm even thinking about something and my phone will recommend that yeah. thing to me and i was like how did you know you got into yes. my brain so yes. it is it is a bit scary for me but the way you say it yes definitely it is there to ease our lives to make our lives more comfortable so that we can probably invest our that time into things that we love maybe get more creative maybe yes. paint more yes. write more yes. you know let the machine do the other mundane jobs exactly. cook more you know like <laughs> put these machines to do the rest of the jobs and yeah we can focus on i think you've put that in in, in in the perfect way but just quickly like i can just imagine in 50 years time when machines have taken over the world, like the Matrix, and people see this video of me supporting them, <laughs> supporting the machines. Like, who is thing. this guy? <laughs> <laughs> how much did they pay him to say? How did the machines pay him to say this? But exactly what you said. Um, uh, we uh, are different to machines, and we can enjoy the. Just, um, we have a limited time on this planet, don't we? So, if the machines can do all that work for us, why do we need to? It's like when you work smarter, you have more time to enjoy the things that you enjoy in in, in life like, like cooking like create like being human hmm. you know what your whole show what your whole show is about and um i think um humans have always feared technology but hmm. it, it it hasn't ended up uh used generally uh technology has been there for the for the good and i think uh even within humans i i think we shouldn't treat machines different to humans in the sense like um in the sense that for now we have those autonomous cars that are coming and they're coming very very soon by the way um when a car has an accident you know if it's if it's a, a, a machine's accident uh we tend to put much more blame on the machine than if it was a human who caused the accident right so i think that, that when these machines do come up and they are coming up there will be discrimination between uh, uh humans and machines um, I think that Will Smith movie shows this yes. <laughs> really, really well. But I think this is this is reality and it's happening right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Scary times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, it still freaks me out. Yes. But anyway, which ways? Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, you manage so many different businesses, as I said, and you're so at such a young age. Um, how do you balance it out? Right. Is it, is it a tough one to be doing everything? Are you like always stressed or <laughs> do you still find your moments of calmness? Uh, I'm not going to lie. It's very stressful. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think it's something that others should be prepared for. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I kind of accept, already accepted that, you know, my life will be stressful, will be hectic. And um, But I think I've always been a calm person. So mm -hmm. I'm able to kind of um, control some of that stress uh, in, in a... In a in a way, I think uh, support is very important. Getting support of others, people will always see the CEO of an organization and think, "Wow, look what he's achieved! Look this! Look what this organization has achieved!" But they don't look at you know who is behind that. You know, right. who is supporting him from mm. a family perspective, from mm. a colleague's perspective. True. Um, and I think surrounding yourself. Um, uh, there was a CEO who said like. Uh, I always want to be the most stupid person in the room. I want to feel like I'm the most stupid person in the room. Surrounding yourself with people who are smarter than you, you have to be brave to do that because, yes. because feeling stupid is not a nice feeling. But by having these people who are smarter than you working with you, uh, who are able to do things better and quicker than you, not because you are stupid, but because you have other um, advantages in other areas, uh, bring them in, let them, let them work with you, um, mm. uh, and you can achieve so much 
together. So I think focus on the areas that you are stronger at. Mm. Uh, like for me at the moment, I'm focusing on leadership. Whereas when I first started, I didn't know what to focus on and I was doing everything and I was really struggling at that time. It's easier now because of uh, what, what I just mentioned. So I mm. think always look for support and always try to clear your mind and have a vision and know how, how to achieve that vision. Yeah. Yeah. What advice would you like to give to 18 year old Amr? <laughs> and what advice would you like to, what advice would the 18 year old Amr give to you? I think 18 year old Amr wouldn't listen to my advice firstly. <laughs> But, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, uh, if, if he would, and if I can convince him, uh, I would probably say, I mean, not just 18 year old Amr, I mean, I mean, 18 year olds or youth everywhere is, um, life is hard. Um, I think, um, be patient. Uh, things take time. Yes. Uh, yes, I think things take time, but, uh, I think always try to, um, have that strength in terms of uh, build up your skills mm. because having that is like having a, a, a weapon inside you which is ready for the right time uh, so even if you feel like you've studied for so long or you've um, trained for so long and you still haven't found the right opportunity the time will come uh, and you will need to take that opportunity and you will need to rely on the skills that you have so mm. i think that's one of the things that that that, that i would mention and sacrifice. You have to sacrifice uh, um, a lot to to get where you want to. Uh, and I think um, being happy, which uh, as a young Amar, I'd never thought was so important, but mm. understanding that now being happy can really kind of give you the energy to achieve right. whatever you want to achieve. Yes. And what uh, the 18 year old Amar would give an advice to you? Uh, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Relax have a fun, bit. Relax, have fun. <laughs> don't uh, take life too seriously. Don't take it too 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 seriously. But now I think this Amara and that Amara have uh, agreed on kind of the balance, and I think now I've kind of found that balance, and I think it's part of the reason as to uh, why I'm kind of um, uh, having these achievements. Hopefully. That's amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. brilliant. I yeah. absolutely love this conversation, and I wish you all the best. Thank and you, I really too. hope and pray that you always. Find this balance. I know it's not going to be an easy road. Yes. Every single day is a battle. Yes. And I really hope and pray that you keep finding this balance. Keep, you know, bringing new concepts to this country, to this region, and maybe to the world as a whole. And more power to you. All There's the more exciting times ahead. And uh, yes. thank you, Jagruti, for bringing out some of the things which I know, but I never think. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, these, uh, what you're doing here is is really, really useful thank for you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I think that's the beauty of a podcast because when we get on to having a conversation, we don't know what are we going to yes. speak about. Yes. And there's so much that we learn about each other, you know, through the process. Yes. So thank you so much for being on the show. And I'm so grateful. And guys, if you're watching this, so please do follow Amar on social media and uh, learn more skills from him learn more things from him how to be a better entrepreneur how to be a better person how to give back so please do follow him and thank you so much for watching thank you i look forward to learning from you too <laughs> <laughs> so please share if you have any ideas please do share with him because yes. he's a leader of oman and i'm definitely sure he's here to give yes to those who have brilliant ideas so let's share more and grow more let's do it well, let's do it yay this was awesome Ooh. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. If it has inspired you even slightly, then please like, share and comment. See you on the next one. Until then, remember, our time is limited. Let's make the most of it. Hey everyone, I am Amar Babud and I am on You Are Human. Uh, please watch, subscribe and like. Uh, I'm very excited to be on here and I'm sure you'll be excited to see what's in store. Thank you. Keep watching You Are Human on YouTube and listen to these amazing conversations on Spotify and other audio platforms.